السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد السلام عليكم Welcome to another program with Sayyid Zafar Abbas um, Today we're going to talk about the greatest of all creations Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Assalamu alaykum Sayyid Zafar Abbas um, we want to go through almost like a biography of the Prophet وسلم, and we want to start off from the very beginning. So let's talk about the just before the Prophet, we want to talk about his uh, line and his lineage, if you can start for us. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah ilaha alihi wa salatu ala ahliha. Indeed, uh, the, the Holy Prophet's lineage and his line is uh, the greatest of lineages um, of which the Holy Prophet himself uh, has talked about on numerous occasions. The Holy Quran speaks about it as well. For of course the Holy Prophet descends from Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam through his son Ismail and uh, where all the prophets um, of Bani Israel and all the other prophets who come after uh, Ishaq alayhi salatu salam descend from his line so all, all of the prophets up to Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu salam descend from Ishaq and therefore from Yaqub and are called Bani Israel but after Ismail alayhi salatu salam the only prophet who comes from his line from Bani Ismail is the only prophet so it's an honour and a distinction that belongs solely to the holy prophet that in his lineage, he's the only one after Ismail alayhi salatu salam to have been uh, given the prophethood and indeed the greatest um, of prophethoods. Um, in terms of his, his parents and his grandparents, as we know, his, uh, his grandfather Abdul Muttalib was a very famous and prominent personality of, uh, of Mecca. He was the, uh, the leader of the tribe of Bani Hashim and indeed had received the uh, trusteeship of the Holy Kaaba in the pre-Islamic times um, from his father and his grandfather uh, due to their exemplary and great character. The pre-Islamic Arabs had entrusted this family, the Bani Hashim, with, uh, with, the, the, with the role of, of, of taking care of the Holy Kaaba and taking care of the pilgrims who came to the Holy Kaaba. Um, every year. Of course, the, the pilgrimage to Mecca existed in the pre-Islamic times, for it came from Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam who had initiated the practice. It had changed form, and the religion of Islam came and uh, reformed the pilgrimage. But in its actual state, the pilgrimage itself, it had existed prior to the religion of Islam as well. So when people used to come, the, it was the Bani Hashim, the family of the Holy Prophet, who would take care of these pilgrims, give them food and water and, and shelter while they stayed in Mecca. So we see from this that the, you know, this, the Holy Prophet comes from a, from a family who were exemplary in and of themselves. And indeed it was an honour uh, for this family to have the greatest of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you've mentioned, to have come from this family. Interestingly, we have a verse of the Holy Qur'an in Surah 3, verse 164, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعْثَ عَلَيْهُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done a favor upon the believers that He has, إِذْ بَعْثَ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ He has selected a messenger and He has sent a messenger from amongst them. So we see that uh, any accusations that the, the parents of the Holy Prophet or the grandparents of the Holy Prophet or the family of the Holy Prophet were not believers, is baseless because the Holy Quran is telling us that the Holy Prophet came to a family of believers. He came to a family of believers who believed in whatever message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala existed prior to the announcement of the religion of, of, of Islam by the Holy Prophet. So in this we see that this is a, a very grand and great family that the Holy Prophet comes to. And uh, you know, it, it is there is their upbringing, which uh, we can see in the other members of the Bani Hashim as well, apart from the Holy Prophet, who stood out for their character.
Awesome. And um, so as we come to the Prophet's birth, we know about her, him being uh, orphaned at a very young age. Um, so let's go, just so we move on to just, after he's orphaned, where does he then go to stay with? Who does he go to stay with? Uh, yes, the famous narration of Ashab al-Fil, which has been mentioned in Surah 105 of the Holy Quran, is, uh, is the same year as the, as the birth of the Holy Prophet, mm -hmm. where Abraha comes forward and wants to destroy the Holy Kaaba. Um, he builds a church in Yemen, people still don't come to visit it, so he comes to destroy the Kaaba. And uh, he, he attacks the Holy Kaaba with, uh, he comes with an army of elephants, which is why it's called as, as, uh, Surat al-Fil. Yeah. And indeed, uh, uh, Abdul Muttalib's and, uh, camels are captured in the process. So Abdul Muttalib comes to see him. To Abraha, I want to have my camels back. Abraha is very surprised. He says, I've come to attack the Kaaba and you're asking for your camels. And Abdul Muttalib says, I am Rabbul Ibil, I am the I am the protector, I am the sustainer, I am the owner of the of the camels. So I've come to ask for my camels. The house also has an owner and he will he will take care of it. And indeed as what as what happens, they come towards the Kaaba, the, the birds come down and they're destroyed. This is the same year as the birth of the Holy Prophet. It's called Amul Fil because of this incident. And the Holy Prophet is born in this year on the 17th of Rabi Uh The narration state that he's, uh, he was born on a Friday. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, the fire that, was, that had been burning for 2,000 years in Persia, uh, which these Erastrians used to uh, consider worthy of veneration, had having been burnt, having uh, been burning for 2,000 years uh, was put out on that morning. It's also been mentioned that the the Romans had uh, had a, had a set of idols which they had placed in the in the in the, in the Holy Roman Empire. And uh, when the Holy Prophet was born on this morning, all the idols came and collapsed onto the ground. These were all signs that, you know, here is he has come who is going to remove the world of, of all this shirk and polytheism and all these incorrect beliefs. And indeed, he's going to purify the, uh, the souls of, of all the people and bring them towards this true message, this original message of believing in, in one God. Yeah. So the Holy Prophet is born. He, as you mentioned, according to the narrations, his father passes away when either he's very young or uh, in some narrations he passes away before he's even born. Um, and so he's, he's brought up by his mother, uh, Amina, who also passes away when he's fairly young. And so his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, then takes care of him for a few years until which day he also passes away with, with, with nothing left, which, which showed that she, 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 she uh, was, was as committed to the message of Islam as the Holy Prophet, that she did not use any of the wealth on herself or rather spent it on, on the Muslims and the cause of Islam as a whole. Right. Inshallah, we'll join you uh, after a short break. We're going to talk about the migration of the Prophet to Medina, what happened in Medina, there was the wars, uh, some of the peace treaties, and the people who were influential in helping spread the message of Islam. Inshallah, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.